Now's the time to get involved. The Coalition for a Strong America is the only conservative grassroots organization meeting with congressmen and high-level staffers on a regular basis. Stephanie Scruggs, co-chairman, is concerned about the upcoming TPA vote. First of all, what you need to know is that Fast Track TPA is a bill before Congress where Congress gives their power to negotiate international trade agreements and treaties to the president. She recommends contacting your representative and telling them to vote no on this measure. It comes to the floor this Thursday, June the 11th. For more information, go to coalitionforastrongamerica.com and let your voice be heard. This has been a special announcement from K98 Talk. Six out of ten Republicans recommend FTR Radio to everyone they know. The other four are rhinos. FTR Radio, online at FTRRadio.com. FTR Radio salutes some of the great Democrat presidents in the radio era. FTR Radio. You're listening to Liz and Taylor. All right, so why can't I get another tattoo? Come on. Because you get another tattoo, then you start talking another gun. But not the movie star, the battling duo from the right war on FTR Radio. Oh, come on. You're the one who said it. That was a joke, partially. (laughs) Enlist in the right war. Won't cost you nothing. Not as good as military service, but it's got to count for something, right? Good evening, folks. Thank you for listening to FTR Radio. I'm Liz Harrison. This is The Right War. And, of course, I am joined here tonight by Taylor. Hi. And Jason. Hi. (laughs) You two are just so enthusiastic. I didn't know how else to respond to it. It was like, yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm happy to be here. And (laughs) I could pull a little John and just start screaming, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm also very what... tired, and I blame both of you. Really? What? No, I don't blame you guys at all. Okay. I, I, blame... I blame I blame pint size for the fact that I'm I'm dead tired. Probably a good reason. I blame yeah. I blame I blame writing and delayed or canceled flights from Washington D.C. Hmm. Those are the sources of my problems. There you go. No, seriously, I thought I was going to die in uh, Washington Reagan International or Washington Reagan Airport on Monday night because the storms that like just came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, it was kind of crazy, and they canceled literally every flight going out of DCA that night, and uh, so I was forced to spend the night one more night and then fly out the next day. Ugh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good times. But at least you didn't have to sleep in the airport. No, I I've didn't. done that. No, yeah. I've done that too. About like, actually, it did that. God, was that back in like February or March or something? Like, I had a, I was flying from DC. My had a, had a, a connecting flight in, at LaGuardia in New York, and then pff, strange, you have to go to New York, go from D- Washington DC to New York to to get to Atlanta. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, they had like a huge snowstorm and. Uh, we finally did take off. I had to, but my flight for to Atlanta was canceled, so I had to get a, a connecting flight in Charlotte to get to Atlanta. But because that flight from New York was delayed to Charlotte, I had to spend the night in the Charlotte airport. It was like a seventeen-hour, like I don't know, marathon travel. It was insane. 
Ugh, yeah. I, sl- I slept for like two hours and I slept clutching my book bag, which has everything near and dear to me when I'm on the road. So yeah, there yeah. You go. Yep. And I got, Hey, I get to do it all again next week. Right. Oh God. <sighs> See, I, I, I'm still the evil one percenter. I almost got stuck sleeping in Reagan. And then uh, all of a sudden I end up with this page going on and they're saying, oh, please report to blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> I show up and there's a guy standing there with, you, you know, you've seen it a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. There with a card. Right. My name on it. And I'm like, what? And he says, uh, you're going to stay in Crystal City tonight. Like, oh, oh, nice. Okay. Lucky. That's not, yeah. yeah, it's like one metro stop away. And Crystal City's, I lived, when I lived in DC, that's where I was. And I liked the area a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, like, it's the travel's not so much that what bothers me. It's just the late nights and the lack of sleep and all that stuff. So, yeah. I, Taylor can attest to this. He's actually hung out with me in DC and can attest to all my late nights and hanging out and drinking in DC. Mm-hmm. Right. So, although Taylor didn't get drunk. Yeah, I had four beers, but that's not that's you're not you that's get, not drunk. You, you didn't even get a buzz off four beers. Well, he could. Like maybe if you drink it in like an, in an hour, maybe two. But I was not... drinking a I was drinking a pretty strong beer, but yeah, I well my alcohol tolerance has gone down with all the weight I've lost. So yeah, no, I no, trust me, I can attest, I can I can sympathize with that, but. I think I had, I don't know how many I had, but it was several Jack and Diets within about, I don't know, how long were we there? Three or four hours? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Good times. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Um, I'm thinking, you know, we're, we're getting into territory. See, it's all Jason's fault. I'm sorry. I am blaming you. Thanks. But. Uh, yeah, you're you're bringing me back to the bad old days when I used to have the wake up vodka. So. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that 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 those were not my best hours. But it, well, at least as far as you know, alcohol was concerned. Yeah. If a fifth of vodka made it through two days, it was a good good week. But. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was the trouble with doing, uh, way too much work on too many political campaigns for a bunch of people that reside in Harrisburg. Right. And now I'm stuck looking at Harrisburg again. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, you are. I've, uh, and Liz, I, I, this, this is truly my fault. And for everybody listening, this is truly my fault. I have, uh, I have, Liz is probably the one person I know in Pennsylvania politics, and I have reached out to her and leaned on her a little bit in the last couple of days. Liz, you want to tell them why? Yeah, because of uh, Senate Bill 869, which is basically going to uh, put an end to Philadelphia being able to claim people's homes when their children decide to sell drugs. $40 worth of drugs. Yeah. $40 worth mean, of drugs. a lot of a lot of drugs there. Yeah, I mean, uh, this was actually the one that, I don't, I don't know if you guys watched Rand Paul's filibuster a few weeks ago, but he was talking about uh, last week. Uh, no, you're right. Two weeks yeah, ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. And he was talking about um, about the Sorvaleses, uh, their Philadelphia like area a family and their son, uh, Yanni, had sold forty dollars worth of heroin from the, their backyard or something like that. And uh, he was arrested. He was charged with a crime. He he pled no contest. He was sentenced to uh, some sort of diversion program uh, for a first time offender because it was his first offense. Uh, but like May eighth last year, uh, police law enforcement showed up at their home uh, and claimed they were, and said they were going to seize the home. Uh, the Soravelas were the owner. The, the parents obviously were the owners owners of the home. They were never charged with a crime. They never did anything wrong. But uh, the home, because it supposedly facilitated a drug deal, uh, was considered seizable property. And so the police began forfeiture proceedings uh, against the home. And as has probably been, I don't know if we've ever actually noted this, noted this before, but in civil asset forfeiture cases, they don't bring charges against, or don't, they don't bring the case against the property owner. They get bring it, bring it against the property. Right. Um, 
and uh, there's actually I saw it today, earlier today um, uh, the Coalition for Public Safety, uh, which is of which Freedom Works is a partner organization. Um, uh, mentioned one case out of Texas that was uh, Texas versus one gold crucifix. Uh, yep. And you guys can watch uh, last week with John Stu- uh, John Oliver. Uh, he talks about some of the silly case names. But um, the Sword of Aelis is, uh, you know, after fighting fighting the city in, in the, the forfeiture, they eventually did w- uh, win because the city gave up and withdrew the case. But they're still pursuing the lawsuit. They got their home back and got to move back in. But, um, you know, P- uh, Philadelphia has has – really kind of preyed on a lot of its local citizens and um and it's largely because of pennsylvania's pretty awful civil asset forfeiture laws i mean um uh, like in most other states uh the burden of proof falls on the property owner and uh there's a, a perverse profit motive that exists for local uh, local prosecutors local police to seize property never charge the person with a crime uh the person may in fact be completely innocent but ultimately that doesn't matter if they can uh, pr- provide some very low standard of evidence that the property is somehow connected to a crime. So, um, but thankfully, uh, state senators Mike Fulmer, who's a Republican, and Anthony Williams have introduced uh, SB 869, which is a pretty comprehensive civil asset forfeiture reform bill. It not only uh, requires a criminal conviction to uh, begin forfeiture proceedings against property connected to a crime, but it also uh, would it also would take uh, it would it would eliminate the loophole that local police and uh, and prosecutor, prosecutors can use to uh, use federal law uh, to begin forfeiture proceedings against uh, property seized in some sort of uh, uh, or some, that was that are that's connected to some sort of raid or, or drug crime. So um, New Mexico has a very similar law, and uh, P- Pennsylvania seems to be pretty close to it, and just as good. So um, we're pretty ho- pretty happy to see this introduced and hoping desperately that it passes because uh, the Sorvaluses aren't the only example. Uh, the the American Civil Liberties... I can't talk tonight. I'm sorry, guys. The American Civil Liberties Union uh, of Pennsylvania released a new report just yesterday uh, detailing uh, some more kind of egregious examples of abuse. Um, and uh, it was... This stuff is... Uh, it's just insane how the process works in Philadelphia. It's uh, it's It's set up to favor the government uh and we were talking i think some of the we were talking beforehand liz about how some of the uh some of the pl- uh, claimants property owners have to show up in court uh, as much as 10 times and if they miss any any court hearing their property is automatically forfeited to the state right and That's uh ridiculous and at, it, it amounts to approximately seven percent of the uh the budget for the DA's office, right. the, and they haven't got in, gotten into the police because the police department, in their ever so gracious way of ignoring the rights of the citizens, this is, of course, information that is, how do I put this? Um, the lobbyists who are opposed to this law are primarily associated with police unions. Right. We'll we'll leave it there. And the police have been less than forthcoming to the ACLU as far as the amount of money that they have received. So now whether that is a clerical issue or a legitimate stonewalling, we'll have to wait and see. I, I know there's at least two or three investigative reporters involved. Mm. So... We'll see. ACLU is not going to come out and start smashing against the police, but I'm not going to say anything about the media. <laughs> well, well the, some of the uh, – just looking at the report earlier today, because today, I have a blog post coming at Freedom Works tomorrow on this, and, um, you know, the, the ACLU of Pennsylvania noted that most people whose cash is seized, they are charged with a crime. That is true. But right. 32% of those people are never convicted of a crime. Right. Never convicted. So we're talking about almost a third of the people who who had their property taken by the government through force are never convicted of any wrongdoing. Well, and it's something else, and this was something that Julie Borowski brought up in that civil asset forfeiture or in the Justice Reform Summit was the fact that last year 
you know, there were $679 million seized in criminal asset forfeiture, right. meaning people who were actually charged with crime, right. and $3.9 billion seized in civil asset forfeiture, meaning people who never were charged with the crime. I mean, well, what's wrong here? Yeah. Well, I mean, there. My, it's, it's funny. My wife earlier today, I was we were talking about civil asset forfeiture for some reason. I think because there was a uh, – there was a uh, – I don't know if you guys heard about this. In Michigan, there was a case where a woman had her vibrator actually seized by police. They they came into her home. She was a medical marijuana patient a, and a registered medical marijuana uh, caregiver. And they came into her home. They took everything, and they even took her vibrator. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like, I'm, well, not, I'm not – this is this – is, I mean, the police deny it, of course, but the she's she's holding true to that claim. The police even went so far as to call her a liar. Uh, based on everything I read today, but um, my wife said something like, "You know, uh, you know, we could we could own, you know, we could own like the city, we could own whatever." And I was like, "It's funny you you put it in in those terms." Like, uh, there was a, a, a city attorney out in La Cruz, Las Cruces, New Mexico, who said something almost ver, almost verbatim. I mean, he said, "We could we could own the city, we could be in the real estate business, we could, you know." That's what he was talking about: civil asset forfeiture and, and the ability, the, the immense power it gives them to take people's stuff. It's, uh, there have been people who, who called it legalized plunder. Uh, and it, it really is. I mean, it is legalized plunder. And I'm not saying that people who, people who are t- truly guilty or truly in, involved in criminal activity, uh, they should be held accountable, but this is why we have criminal proceedings. If someone is guilty of a crime, build a case, then take their, uh, and prosecute them, convict them, then take their stuff. Uh, that's the way it should be. That's how due process works. Civil asset forfeiture denies people of their right to due process. The Fifth Amendment right. very clearly states no life, liberty, or property shall be denied without due process of law. But that's what happens here. Yeah. Now, we were talking briefly before, and you were saying that um, the Pennsylvania law comes close to the gold standard. You might, We might actually be looking at getting the gold standard, even though the law doesn't necessarily cover all the bases. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> um, you, and you, ironically enough, went and uh, linked to it over at uh, Reason.com. Right. Um, and this dates back to 2012, but there have been more cases since then through the same judge's court. I'm uncertain about how many. I, I could probably pick up the phone and find out in a matter of like 10 minutes uh, during daylight hours. But Commonwealth Court Judge Dan Pellegrini, uh, back in 2012, went and said that civil asset forfeiture law is state-sanctioned theft and ordered the lower court to re-examine the situation in Center County. Mm -hmm. Now, when he did that, because he is a Commonwealth Court judge, um, well, not only because of that... uh, Pellegrini has, I believe, still a 98 to 99 percent record. And what that means is that uh, he does not get overturned. Yeah. His cases go to the Supremes for whatever reason. He does not get overturned. And it's rare whenever his cases end up up there in the first place. So you're talking about arguably our gold standard judge saying from the bench, no, this doesn't happen. So there's a, there's a reason why there might be some minor holes in the legislation as far as like ACLU or Freedom Works or anybody else would be concerned that really aren't an issue anyway because as far as the Commonwealth is concerned, they're settled law just as much as Roe v. Wade, yeah. if not more so. Yeah. So Well, I think... I think what you're going to see, and you've already seen Americans for Tax Reform, you've already seen Freedom Works, you've already seen the ACLU uh, come out in support of this this bill, uh, SB 869. You're probably, I think, the Institute for Justice has also put their stamp on it. And in fact, they may have even helped write it. I don't know that for sure, but that's I'm just kind of surmising here. But they do a lot of work in the states on civil asset forfeiture. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more organizations from the left and the right uh, come out and support this bill and and. You know, it's all a matter of what happens. But I can tell you that I do know, although I did not mention this in my post today at FreedomWorks, that uh, Governor Tom Wolf, he's a Democrat, 
but he's he's on record saying he wants reform to civil, state civil asset forfeiture laws. Um, so, or the Commonwealth's, excuse me, I know you guys are picky about that. The Commonwealth's civil asset <laughs> forfeiture law. I actually did, no joke, Liz, I did this in mind when I was writing my post both yesterday and the one I have coming tomorrow. I was very careful to call it the Commonwealth. Right. Because I don't want to get yelled at by you. <laughs> I don't want you. I don't want you to fly down to Georgia and kick my, you know, kick my rear end just because I, I called it a state. You, you never could get her out of the out of the house. Oh come on now, give me a break. <laughs> but I was uh, out but, most of the day. <laughs> but no, this this uh, this I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this bill, and I, I think that we have a really good uh, chance at uh, getting it passed. But uh, and I know Republicans may need some convincing, but Freedom Works we're we're gauging. We're gauging our involvement right now, and hopefully we'll we'll be able to to sway on the fence Republicans to to support it. So, yeah, and that that's an oddity here. I mean, normally, well, to place it in perspective, um, Senate Bill eight sixty nine is sponsored. Uh, let me see, Fulmer and Leach have a previous history for interesting legislation. Uh, they have been involved in the legalization of marijuana. Ah. So. Yeah. Now, Leach is, argue, uh, Dalen Leach, he's a very special kind of person. (laughs) (laughs) I love him dearly just because, you know, I I just never know what's going to come out of him. But based on the political structure in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and given the individuals who are involved, having Fulmer Williams... Anthony Williams is an important person to have. You get Williams, you get pretty much everybody uh, in the Senate and then on the floor in in our uh, in our house. Yeah. You will get both of them for pretty much all of Eastern Pennsylvania. Yeah, from Philadelphia over to Harrisburg. You get Leach. You're going to get everybody in the Commonwealth who is for quote progressive policy which covers a good a good share of the democrats that are left here in western pennsylvania and anybody who williams had ticked off yeah <laughs> <laughs> so jay costa will get you western pennsylvania straight up from south uh, south to north and i do say that for a reason he's from southern uh, southwestern pennsylvania gotcha Mensch is your man in central PA. You need him to get anybody in the uh, area between the Appalachian Ridges and uh, that covers like State College area and anything north of Harrisburg. So basically, and Fulmer, of course, is the Harrisburg region, Mm. Lebanon County, etc. So the uh, Wozniak and Bartolotta are bonus you're you're yeah. with with uh Bartolotta you're getting some more backing from the Republicans. Now we have a Republican majority in both houses. This bill could turn into a bargaining chip. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah, you had mentioned that before because uh, there were some other ancillary issues at play, right? Yes. Um basically it's gone into judiciary. I don't know because it was only introduced today. I have to go and make a couple calls and find and and find out tomorrow whether or not it's going to be fast tracked. Because you have to understand that right now we're in budget talks. We are trying to get a budget passed. However, there are issues that have to do with our budget that have not been rectified in committee yet. And honestly, we really don't have a bill <laughs> I see. for our budget. We don't really have one. We we had one that had a a hundred percent down vote from the House, which was called a stunt by Wolf, because Wolf wants to introduce a massive amount of taxes. Yeah. So of course, as Democrats do. Right. Well, unfortunately for Wolf, he got a hundred percent down vote. <laughs> which oh, wow. basically says that none of the Democrats in the Commonwealth are going to have his back on this. Ha! And it was because they separated the taxation from all of the, everything else to do with the budget. So that's why he got the 100% down vote, and he said it was a stunt, and, well, 
bottom line is that everybody did that. All of those representatives did that so that they could save their bacon whenever it comes to election time, which, of course, we're heading into another election year in 2016. Hmm. So, at least for all of them, because they're elected every two years. You know, I got to tell you, Liz, I got, one thing I got to be honest with you about here is I didn't even know Republicans held, held a majority in Pennsylvania because it always has this reputation of being such a like a blue state. We go blue on national presidential elections, but honestly, the red creep has been moving from central PA into the city regions. At this point, um, Allegheny County, which is Pittsburgh. Right. Once you reach the Pittsburgh city limits, and actually it's starting to encroach onto uh, the city of Pittsburgh because there are certain districts, because we have way too many representatives, that's a whole other story. But some districts straddle the city line. And I think there might be five of them that mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I, I think at least two or three of them have gone red. Oh, wow. I, I honestly have not looked at the map since the previous election, but we did have gains on the Republican side. Um, my county, which is east of uh, east of the city, Westmoreland County, we have been red. We have been blue my entire life. My county uh, offices were all Republican. I didn't look to see who won this time. Yeah, go and yell at me because... Or, as well we it's in november when we decide finally but i didn't even look to see who's moving up from the primary but um as it stands right now not only are we looking at the possibility of remaining red in county um administration but we're also looking at turning the bench red oh wow isn't like the only Democrat that gets elected in your area anyway, the uh, crap, uh, the dog catcher or something like that, the dog catcher, the accountant. (laughs) No, she turned Republican. Oh, okay. Yeah, our tax collector. So, yeah. My, My own town council is majority Republican at this point, and that's happening by vote, by both vote and attrition meaning that the Democrats were all literally dropping dead. So the biggest Democratic area in the state is Philadelphia, right? Um, no, the city of Pittsburgh still car- uh, the city of Pittsburgh still carries the presidency. Okay. We have three Democrat areas, tr- three st- Democrat ho- um, strongholds with high population base, which is why we're a blue state in national elections. And that's Pittsburgh, Erie, and Philadelphia. Harrisburg is pretty much blue, but we don't really care. Gotcha. So, because they they honestly don't carry, like, there aren't as many delegates from that area. Gotcha. So you're, del- you're heavy on blue delegates, mostly coming out of Philadelphia, also coming out of Pittsburgh and Erie. If we could, like, give Erie to New York and Philadelphia to New Jersey, we would be a red state. Okay. And, of course, we keep on trying to do that. It would be really nice if we could. I keep on begging, but... <laughs> it's not working. No. It's not happening. No. Chris Christie doesn't want Philadelphia. <laughs> I, I mean, who wouldn't want the cradle of liberty? You know, our, our founding city. Who wouldn't Chris, want it? Chris Christie wearing a softball uniform. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it's it, it's a very strange situation with the Senate bill the way it is right now. I have to look and see who Tim Krieger got on the other side. So but, I'm at, I'm at, I'm gonna have to go post that picture in in the, in the chat room. You're gonna have to excuse me for just a moment because <laughs> I saw that I saw that this morning and pretty much died laughing. Yeah, I know we were all debating on, well, trying to find out what the heck the deal was with the release of the, um, the Senate bill. I don't know if they actually went and, uh, no, they haven't released anything. So there isn't a separate bill being, re- being released in the House. Krieger's waiting for the Senate bill to move, correct? 
that was not my my understanding was he was uh he was offering his own, offering the same bill in the house. Okay, so that means that it may or may not get printed. Yeah, I mean, it will be assigned a number at some point whenever it comes out of judiciary. Right, or he could just be delegated once it pa- passes the Senate. He could just be delegated the House carrier. Right. I, yeah, which I mean, so but my understanding was he was going to file a companion bill. That was my understanding. I could, yeah. yeah he won't could. file a companion bill until it comes out of judiciary, and he gets a chance to read through to see if there had been any amendments in committee. Right. Po- yeah. Possibly. Yeah, that that's pretty much what it's waiting on. So he won't if uh, if he was introducing his own, then it would go into House Committee. So if he's just deferring to Fulmer's bill, then he'll wait until it comes out of committee. If he still agrees with it, then he'll take it to the House floor as a sponsor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we're like I said, we're we're gonna engage and see what we can do in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a it's a pretty busy time for freedom works we had the blogger summit in uh last month we have an activist we actually are uh we're having a uh one of our empower tours which are, which is our minority engagement campaign mm-hmm. they're up in michigan this week where also civil asset forfeiture reform is also moving in case you haven't heard uh, i was noting the the story about the vibrator earlier and uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> don't take my sex toys really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not worth anything <laughs> Uh, that 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 was the the I mean the quote I actually got to find the article and read you the quote because it was a he- I saw the headline earlier today and the headline really just kind of said it all. Um, it's yeah, it's how a how a sex toy put national put put the national spotlight on Michigan civil asset forfeiture laws targeted for reform. That was the headline at uh, today at mlive dot com. And the woman, her name is uh, Jennifer Hensey. She says, they've had my stuff for 10 months. My ladders, my iPads, my children's iPads, my children's phones, my medicine for my patients. Why a ladder? Why my vibrator? I don't know either. Why TVs? It's just, it's almost like unbelievable that this is even happening. Like, I mean, her vibrator. What? Who cares? I mean, well, and, and that's that's the thing. There was another story. Actually, there's another story uh, in the same the same hearing where Jennifer Hinsey testified. It was before the House Judiciary Committee, the Michigan House Judiciary Committee, last month. There was another woman who who kind of uh, who she was explaining um, uh, some of the things. Or no, I'm sorry. The Washington Post made made the uh, list public of the things that were that were taken from her her home. Uh, Taylor, they took. You name it, they took it. They took uh, televisions. They took a leaf trimmer, a bicycle, a weed whacker, a chainsaw, a snowblower. I mean, why? This, this, because this, this doesn't they, make any sense. Because the police actually said that she could use the ladder. The ladder facilitated her her supposed criminal activity because she had to get on the ladder to climb up to reach the plants. Really? I'm not kidding. That's did, what did they, they say. Said. That, what did they say that the vibrator was supposed to do? That it was I, like it could be used to beat the soil down or something? I don't know. I mean, and keep and keep in mind. I don't know if I trim mentioned, the soil. Me, medical marijuana is legal. It's very it's heavily regulated, but it's legal in Michigan. <laughs> I mean, uh, these people are allowed to grow up to 12 plants, and practitioner or, or caregivers are allowed to grow uh, the plants of other registered medical marijuana users up to the 12 plant limit. So uh, nothing they were doing was illegal under state law, but yet they're being targeted by the police who just kind of assume they're involved in some sort of criminal activity. But I mean, like I, here, here, like no joke. I mean, the whole list of stuff I can put it in the chat room if you want me to, but it took a weed whacker, chainsaw, snowblower, a Matthews bow with a case and accessories, uh, PlayStation three, Three TVs, several firearms, um, all of which were legally owned, uh, a pellet gun. A pellet gun. Uh, a pellet gun. Uh, they took various paperwork, including receipts, income tax returns, handwritten notes regarding the selling of marijuana as far as prices uh, or ounces and total prices uh, uh, if they were to caregivers. Uh, they took their 
they took copies of their vital records, social security num- uh, cards, uh, birth certificates, uh, iPads, iPhones. Uh, what else? I'm trying to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why would they have any reason to seize documentation that arguably is illegal to take from anybody? Don't know. Because they can. No. What what part of illegal? Didn't we understand? Uh, uh, Liz, can you um play my disclaimer, please, while I'm thinking about it? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting mad. I, I said something mean. Yeah. Here's the kid, folks. This is the Pine Size Pundit, and I'm here to tell you that anything Tato says on the right war is his opinion and his opinion only. He does not speak for his employees, his employer's employer, or anyone else. He especially does not speak for my mom unless she says so. All right. They, look, so look, Liz, we're, we're back. Yeah, we're back. Uh, okay. okay. T- Taylor got his disc- disclaimer, so he wants to speak. Taylor. Uh, okay. They took. I'm looking at this list that they took. The trimmer, the bike, the backpack, blower, the weed whacker. I guess the twenty the twenty gauge shotgun that was in a safe. All these guns were in safes. They weren't. They weren't like. They were out in the open. They, yeah. These, these were not heavily armed drug dealers waiting for the police to come in. Yeah. It took a Toro mower, motor, uh, mower, lawnmower. Uh, why? I don't. I mean, because I, I just I can't figure that. And, you know, and the comment first... that I made because they can. He, here's all right. Look, we know here that I am not anti-cop. Okay, uh, sure. I, I'd like I'd like to point this out. I am not anti-cop. I wanted to be a police officer. Uh, uh, just you know, and just to make it clear, my dad was a cop. My dad was a cop, so right. uh, yeah. But there is an issue here with, with this: is that you know, when you give the police so much power, and you give the the prosecutors so much power and you have bad cops. Okay. This is not an indictment of police in general. This is just, this is an indictment of bad cops. When you have bad cops who feel enabled to take this stuff because there's no accountability and accountability hasn't been given and nobody's willing to talk about this until now. Thank God. That's why stuff like this happens. Yeah. That's why you see, uh, the fact that you know the a, a a digital scale was taken, a pink Hello Kitty wallet that had U.S. currency and two credit cards, you know paperwork including a DTE energy statement, yeah. receipts. The claim the police, the, the law enforcement makes when these raids happen, and by the way, this raid happened when the mother Annette Sh- uh, Shattuck, Shattuck was not at home. Her mother was watching the four, her four kids, all of whom are under the age of 10, I believe. And uh, they came in armed with masks, pointing the gun at, at the family and threatened to shoot the family dog. Now, that's according, that's according to An- uh, Annette, who was not there, but that's what her kids, have to- that's what her kids and her mother, uh, mother told her, what, how all this all went down. But, I mean... Uh, they even like, you know, I mean, look, this is, it was either her or the other woman. They took their kids Christmas presents and no reason to take, but the police believe that any, any property that could have, that, uh, any property obtained could have been used or purchased with, with proceeds from, from drugs. But again, medical marijuana and both these women were our paid medical medical marijuana patients and caregivers. This is legal in Michigan. The police have no reason to conduct these sorts of raids or to go after these people's property, but they do. And neither one of these people were ever convicted of a crime. Uh, The lady with the vibrator 
was charged, but the char- a judge later found that they didn't have any real reason to bring the charges, so the charges were dismissed. Yeah. I, it's just, it, I, it's, I, I can't figure this out. I really can't figure this out. Because I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this, and, and who knows? Maybe her vibrator wasn't taken, okay? I'll just, maybe it wasn't taken. But why the, why all the other stuff? You know? Why, why the, why the Orion 24 inch TV? Yeah. Why the PlayStation 3? Why the, the, no, you're, look, you're, you're I'm with the you, man. Snowblower. But- the Why, this is what I can't figure out. Their reasoning. I, I is, will say this: I don't have a problem with them taking the Glock because I'm not a big fan of Glocks. Oh, but whatever. I'm just joking. <laughs> but no, I know. But no, I mean the reasoning is income and I don't, tax returns. I don't agree with now. That's just, I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. But the reasoning for the the actual seizure of property is because they believe it could have been purchased with the proceeds from drug activity. But again, medical marijuana is legal in Michigan. Yeah. And thankfully, the reform bills uh, and the reform bills actually passed the House today in Michigan, and um, uh, they would actually protect medical marijuana patients. Uh, and they heighten, they ensure the burden of proof falls on, uh, falls on the uh, the government, and they raise the standard of evidence required to to begin forfeiture proceedings. It raises it from uh, what it's called a preponderance of the evidence, which is a fifty percent likelihood. That the property seized and uh, is connected to some sort of crime. A preponderance of the uh, evidence means it's uh, it's more likely than not. Um, it's just uh, it's actually it makes my that, head that's, hurt. No, I agree, but that standard is just below. It's the highest standard in civil court, and it's just below what's necessary for a criminal conviction, which is beyond a reasonable doubt. So, uh, in in in. Like, like I said, it, and I, it, it's, I actually have a blog post coming on the Michigan reforms tomorrow. But uh, ideally, they would they would get rid of civil asset forfeiture, just, just, civil asset forfeiture, just like uh, New Mexico's done, Montana has done, like Pennsylvania is trying to do. And they would uh, they would also get rid of the perverse profit motive behind these seizures because police in Michigan can keep up to one hundred percent of the proceeds. Um, but uh, that those are reforms. We'll take what we can get in the package of bills that were passed today. I believe it was eight bills in total, um, do offer protections and, and are worthy of support, even though they're not not as comprehensive as I would like for them to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why Why don't we go and stick with, uh, you don't get to take the stuff until they're found guilty. <laughs> no. It goes all, it goes uh, back to Matt Kibbe's book, Don't Hurt People and Don't Take Their Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what civil asset forfeiture does. It hurts people and it, they, it allows and they police. And it takes their stuff. Yeah. It takes their stuff. Um, it's I, I remember once on, on Twitter, I, I made a comment about how that should be like the name of a book or something, forgetting yeah. that uh, that it actually was the name of a book. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's actually, like, oh, yeah, it was one. It's actually one of Matt's favorite sayings. Uh, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. And he took the saying and he turned it into a book. Uh, yeah. it's, the, it's the modern day harm principle, right? So, um, yeah. John's... Uh, guys, I hate to do this. I'm being pinged by a boss at work. Oh, fun. Yeah. Fun, fun. Yeah. So, um... Well, Go see like, what the boss wants. Yeah, and then I'll come back. Not yeah, going to take too long. So, if not, catch you guys next week. All right, man. All right. All right. See you in a bit. Later. Gotta uh, love when you're on call. Okay, not. <laughs> the life of, uh... The life of a working man. Not to say I don't... Yeah. Well, I do work. I just... It seems like I don't work as hard as Taylor does. Or the shift that Taylor works. So, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, nobody envies Taylor's overnight. No, That's... God. I did that. Uh, for, I did that for one month of my life. I'll never do it again. Yeah. Well, my my daughter has sympathy on him because that's where she is right now. Oh, really? Working overnight. <laughs> yeah. Better yes, her. People. Better her and Taylor than me. Yeah, yes, people, my kid is old enough to be doing that. <laughs> hey. oh. And then you have me who have who has no kids and doesn't really care for kids and uh oh. Doesn't ever really want kids. See, you can always borrow them. Uh, I've done that once actually. Uh so our niece, she spent the night with us like two summers ago. It was the first time we've ever had a child over to our house who did, who stayed for more than two hours. 
and uh, she was actually uh, I gotta tell you she was uh, she was she was brilliant. She she didn't act out. She was like four at the time. She didn't act out or anything. Uh, I ended up sitting there playing her songs on my guitar for a little while, and then we took her out to Chick Fil A for some for some hate chicken. Um, right. <laughs> and uh, she had a good time, and she ended up watching Netflix and watching kid movies with my wife most of the night. And she's a she's an adorable little brat. So, but yeah, that's probably uh, it. Will probably never happen again. So. It's one of those things I want to try once every thirty, you know, thirty something years. So. Ow! <laughs> and here I was gonna go and like offer up pint size to come down and you know introduce nah, but... you the concept of having the terrible teens around. <laughs> well, we're all we're all set on our end. Oh, hey Taylor. Hi. Welcome back. He's back. Yeah. Well, you know. Dun dun dun. Yeah. He he told the man where to go. Did you tell him? That, never mind. I'm not saying that. No, I did not. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Remember, folks, I'm punchy. I was up until four o'clock this morning from yesterday. So when Jason was saying stuff that happened yesterday, I'm like, oh, yeah, it was yesterday, wasn't it? It feels like two or three days ago. No, oh, basically, I... basically, I got the reminder that, you know, it was it was that close to and people can't see this but my hands are like you know my fingers are like real close to each other apparently i was that close to being brought onto the day shift and then they changed their mind oh yeah i was that close to getting hit and hit by a car on in dc on saturday yeah well you know. i was yeah that's what you get for riding a bike in dc yeah and, and thinking you have a clear shot across the, to get across the street and not having a, I was actually on my way oh, to Oh, is that bike thing that that bike thing is that a city owned or is that a private group? You know, I really don't know. I okay. I I don't know at all. Um all I know is it's really convenient cuz they have so many around the city. But yeah, uh yeah. uh and it's also like 10 bucks a month or something like that. And uh I was on my way to it was funny cuz I was on my way to Ash Gal's birthday party. Her birthday was on Saturday. Oh. And uh Oh yeah. Else, yeah, we had a small get together. It was me, her, Will Upton, um, Kevin Glass uh, at the Franklin Center, and a few other people. And uh, like I said, I was—I thought I had a clear shot across the street. I didn't, and I think I made it out by like ten feet. So, well, at least you know you didn't have a turnstile to try to stab you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so almost happened. Almost happened to me. I actually thought about you. Uh, I was. I don't remember what day it was. I was the only day I didn't go to the office last week was Sunday. And uh so I think it may have actually been Monday. The turnstiles like were just going crazy. People I think there were people trying to use all three of them. I think each of them was backed up by like two or three people. And uh, people were just trying to like run through them real fast and they were like going off with that annoying buzzing sound. Mm-hmm. And uh I was like waiting and kept waiting for it to shut and it never shut. So I started to go and then it started to close. And I was like, Oh sh-. You know, So I, I quickly took a step back. I was like, I don't want to be Taylor. I don't want to be Taylor. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'll never hear the end of it. If I'm Taylor. Oh, yeah. I'll never hear the end of it. And Kibby was right behind me too, which is makes it even more embarrassing. So <laughs> yeah, I can only, only imagine. So, uh, yeah. Jason, you, you you all right there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible Kibby impersonation. But. As a no, you, you got the you have the uh, the general uh, uh, attitude attitude, yeah. But you don't have the you know, I don't do you, impersonations. So. Yeah, Kibby Kibby has a certain uh, certain approach that's really hard to to copy. So, but uh, I like Matt. Oh, Matt's great. Matt's great. Um, one of the one of the. In case he's listening, Matt, I I, I really do like you. <laughs> oh, good God! <laughs> Matt is one of the. Uh, it's it's not every day you get to work for your one of your your ideological heroes. So, uh, um, and Matt is certainly one of mine. So I consider it an honor and a privilege to work there. So, um, yeah, good times. That works. That works. Yeah, the the two good things is if you can work with uh, work for somebody who you look up to like that, and the other one is when you end up with somebody who 
you can trust implicitly. You know, like no no holds barred. Or you don't have to worry about it. I, yeah. I'm lucky to have that on, yeah. on multiple counts, but yeah, it's uh, it's been. I'm thankful to be you know just with great co-hosts and guests and all that. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was referring to you, Taylor. But oh, I, I know. Was also, I, I, I was also have been referring a little bit. Yeah, Drink, drinks all around on everybody. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. I was also referring to you know one of, one of the the best dudes that I I know out there when it comes to editing and words, uh, and I do have to have him on the air at some point again, Doc Jim Robbins. Maybe I won't go uh, fanboy, <sighs> which was kind you? of weird that I went fanboy. Yeah, it was weird that I went fanboy the one time that we had him on. Yeah, gotta love Doc Robbins. He's great. Hey Taylor, before before we wrap up, and I know we only have a little bit of time left, I have to tell you, uh, I have to confess something to you. Okay. I have been listening. You know, we always talk about punk rock and hardcore and all that yeah. stuff. We can talk about music. I have been listening to a ridiculous amount of emo lately. <laughs> Ooh, ouch! Yeah, I do not know why. Uh. It's like. Uh, there See, couple... he needs to listen to last night's show. There, oh no! Yes, 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 he does. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. find this. Gary Eaton and I talking music. Uh, it's it, it's actually a couple of bands in particular. I've been listening to uh, Braid and uh, Mock Orange, and it's just been kind of insane lately. I don't know well, why. At least it wasn't uh, Blink One Eighty Two. No, it's not real punk rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before I forget. Uh, those of you who are friends of uh, Michelle Ray, please keep her in uh, your prayers after, and her son in your prayers, those who are praying uh, people. Uh, as she uh, tweeted about uh, 30 minutes ago, her son was in a pretty serious accident. Oh, no. He's still in the ICU, and they are oh. concerned about kidney and liver function. Thank you for all the thoughts and prayers. Keep Please keep him there if you don't mind. He has a nephrology consult in the morning. Uh, Michelle tweeted that uh, 32 minutes ago. No, no, no. No. Yeah. So, I I hate to end on a down note, but um, guys, do that. Yes. Well, well, we, we don't have to end on a down note because we do have a few couple minutes left at okay. least so yeah, uh, let's see yeah. sorry well, go ahead no what were you going to say um I'm not sure what I was going to say <laughs> see Taylor makes us laugh <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys want something interesting to read I have a piece over at Rare today it's about uh about a, a surveillance amendment that was passed by the house of uh, representatives last night um thomas massey from kentucky he's a what a second term congressman now or second term plus congressman now uh yeah. and uh it was his amendment <clears throat> it passed the house by a vote of 383 to 43 which is more than the margin that the freedom act passed and uh, so you guys can check that out, and I'll post it in the chat room so people can go read it. Looks like it's already doing pretty good, uh, pretty well over at uh, Rare. I think it had uh, something like three thousand shares last time I looked. So, um, yeah, check that out. And tomorrow we'll have more posts at Freedom Works um, related to civil asset forfeiture reform in Michigan, and then the ACLU uh, report out of Philadelphia. So. You can go to freedomworks.org to check all that good stuff out, as well as I'm sure I'll be writing something else justice reform related tomorrow at some point. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and just so everybody places this in perspective, I mean, you understand that we're all talking about this stuff and the abuses that happen on the state level are also occurring on the federal level. And of course, our yeah. new attorney general had built a reputation for being particularly nasty yeah. where all of that is concerned. And like anything else when it comes to the law, 
whenever the states start adopting laws that have to do with a particular situation like civil asset forfeiture, eventually it will get to the point where our federal lawmakers will decide that it is a good idea to address the issue. Yeah. Well, we're seeing movement on reforms. I mean, we don't know. And by the way, hey, Green Death, he's he's on he's on uh, the chat right. uh, chat room right now. But where um, were you, Green Death? Yeah, he was, really. He was texting me the entire show, like about yeah. Um, no, uh, but there is some movement on reforms. Uh, Rand Paul's already introduced the Fair Act, uh, which would fundamentally reform and put the uh, burden of proof back on the government instead of the individual. And uh, wasn't Cory Booker <clears throat> involved in that too? No, Cory Booker was not, as far as I know. That's the Redeem okay. Act. Okay. Uh, and then the uh, Senator Chuck Grassley, uh, he chairs the Judiciary Committee, is apparently working on his own bill. Although that bill was expected to drop in late April, it still hasn't dropped, so we don't know what the holdup is. Actually, I do know what the holdup is, but I really can't talk about what the holdup is. Right. Uh, but uh, but we know there is some movement there, but a lot of states are, are, are undermining federal law by closing the, the kind of egregious loophole that exists uh, that allows... Uh, state and local law enforcement to uh, basically share or allow the federal government to adopt seize property and then the government in turn sends it back sends the 80% of the proceeds back to the state and local law enforcement agency Uh, but New Mexico prohibits that now Pennsylvania may prohibit it if this bill passes without any changes so um, those are that's why I always call New Mexico the gold standard because the bill not only got rid of civil asset forfeiture by requiring a criminal conviction it uh, completely undermined uh, the uh, federal government's uh, uh, loopholes. So, uh, yeah, and Pennsylvania could be next. Here's hoping. And I hope so. So, thank you all for listening tonight, and we will catch you again next Wednesday. I have no idea what will be going on, because I never know ahead of time. Like last night, I got happily surprised with Gary Eaton. So... <laughs> Thank you again, and catch Jace at Jace Liberty on the Twitter and at FreedomWorks and, well, everywhere. And, of course, Taylor at Taylor M. VLR. VLR. So, have a great night, folks, and have a great weekend. We will catch you next week. Go Braves! Bloody Mary's and Broadsheets co-host Stacy had a recent interview with Stephanie Scruggs, who's an activist for the Coalition for a Strong America. First of all, what you need to know is that Fast Track TPA is this bill before Congress where Congress gives their power to negotiate international trade agreements and treaties to the president. She also had this to say. Is you get WTO tribunals, big world courts, telling the United States, yeah, you got to change your laws. This has been a K98 Talk exclusive.